Hi guys, welcome to another video. Um, just doing a quick one um, on bungs. A little bit controversial for some, I know, but uh, deadly method all the same. So I say just a quick video just showing you how to attach the bungs. I've actually had a request of somebody who watches the videos to um, show how I attach them. Um, a lot of different types of bungs. Uh, this is my box that I carry with me all the time. It's got various bungs and they all have various uses. So let's get started. So contrary to belief, um, fishing the bung or indicator um, isn't just a case of chucking and chancing it. There is a degree of um, technique and uh, setup for the bungs. Now in my little box here I've got different types um, and they've all got different uses. Um, when it's quite choppy uh, I tend to go for the bigger bungs and when it's quite calm and flat I try to get away with a, a small bung like this one. Uh, my favourites tend to be uh, these little teardrops, little teardrop bungs basically because <clears throat> they're quite aerodynamic and I can adjust these or take them off the line without actually cutting the leader. Um, these are like a, a slip and slide these ones whereas these ones with the cocktail stick in the centre you have to actually thread it up the line um, which means if you want to uh, stop fishing the bung and go onto a long line for example you have to cut the flies off and slide this off whereas with the teardrop you can actually just take this off the line which I'm, I'm going to show you how to use all of them individually uh, in a second but basically they've all got uses um, some of them have um, some of them actually have hooks in for those times when they, I'm sure you've all seen where the fish have come up and tried to take the indicator I've got little competition bungs like this one um, which have a hook in the end so anything that comes up and inquires on that is going to get a bit of a shock. Um, so anyway, I'm going to um, get some leader and show you how I attach these bungs. Okay, now this is a bung I tend to use when there's a bit of a chop on the water. Maybe it's a bit rough. Um, good little size bung. It can support, I've supported three beaded flies underneath this, even, even two heavy lures no problem really really good little little bongs um basically hold through the center you get your main line and leader you put it through there yeah and you get your, your little bit of cocktail stick and place it in there this effectively this effectively traps the line but you can still adjust and slide this is quite thick line so it's a bit tougher but you can you can still adjust when you're using sort of eight pound fluorocarbon you can adjust it slide it back and forward downside of using these if you want to call it that is that you've got your fly tied up on the end and you might decide that you want to uh, change techniques take the bung off and maybe fish the same flies but on a on a long leader or just let them drift around or you want to just change put a lure on um, you have to actually cut the fly off the end um, to get this off basically which is that's quite a, which is taking the cork out taking the pin out and sliding it off again that's the downside of those but that said um, this is one of my favorites this size because it can hold up heavy flies as I say and it also sits well in a chop you can see it quite visually in a flat calm the downside of these for me personally is that they are quite resistant so when the fish takes the fly they feel a, quite a lot of resistance because of the mass of this as opposed to something this size in a flat calm is way better for it for me because it's got smaller mass it, it, the fish feels a lot less resistance ends up in more 
hookups, which is why I was saying at the beginning of the video that it, bung fishing or indicator fishing is not just a case of sticking something on that floats and throwing it out and waiting for it to go under. You can make a big difference by using these different size bungs, so it's always worth bearing in mind. Okay, so the next bung um, is these Fario bungs. Um, they have a hook point in them, sit quite nicely on the surface like that. If fish, any fish comes up and has, has a go, uh, there's a nice hook point there, you're probably going to get a hook up. Now, the only thing about these ones is, I don't know if you can see, but they're actually you actually fish these on a dropper okay so you've got your bung there and this is the line here where you would have your fly pattern so basically it's going to sit on the surface like that with your fly pattern below it yep only downside for me personally is um, You've got no manoeuvrability at all. Uh, once that depth's set, you can only cut this back to bring the, the fly higher in the water. You can't do the reverse. So it's not as adaptable as a sliding bump where you can adjust the depth, which to me makes a huge difference because the fish can move up and down um, in the water column several times a day, no problem. Um, so for this one, plus sides, you, you will get a hookup. Uh, if a fish comes up and take it, you've got a good chance of getting a hookup anyway. But there's no manoeuvrability. But it is, it's still an option. Just like the Fario, um, this is a competition bomb. The hook in here, uh, homemade obviously, quite easily easy to knock together. Um, these fish are exactly the same way, tied on a dropper with your fly on the main leader. And this dropper coming off, you set the depth to say three four foot and you're pretty much static there again the upside is fish comes up and takes this which they often do it's a hookup but there's no adjustment just another option to the fario and you can make lots of these at home fairly cheaply again in the same vein as the fario and the competition bum i knocked together these for myself which i've used quite a few times looks like a bit of a monstrosity but they do work um, it's just ether foam, cut to a shape pretty much akin to a CDC plume. Um, a little emerging buzzer tied on there. Sits in the foam like that with the line coming down, the drop behind. You still do get hookups um, and they do take this quite often. Although um, you are quite reliant on the, the drop off fly being sitting away a little bit. If, if you use too heavy a fly on the point, the, the fluorocarbon tends to sit down here, can obstruct the hook. Um, but they do fish quite well for me, and I've, I've used these for a while actually. Very easy to knock together, uh, and it's you're basically fishing a, an emerger and a, a, another buzzer or whatever you want to fish underneath. And because it's quite a chunky piece of foam, you can use some fairly heavy flies beneath that as well. At the end of the day, it's kind of sacrificial, it, it is a bung. Um, it is static, as in there's no sliding option, so you are set at depth. But it can turn out that the fish will turn on to this through the day, and you probably end up getting more fish on this than the submerged pattern. Next up, we we'll have these dual color jobbies. Um, the silicon in the center, um, and you've got the choice of orange or yellow, so you can. Put this on the line either way to suit the conditions so you can see it visually quite easy to, to attach to the leader uh, you basically take this stretchy piece of silicone out now some people do um do feed this silicon over the line first um and then attach this i tend not to um it's never really made any difference to me whatsoever so what I do is I normally put my leader through the slit in there and you take your silicon and you stretch it in make sure it's try and get quite even if you can hands are a bit slippy today um, so you stretched it in like that and what you do is you grab each end 
of this rubber and you twist them again opposing turns twist it now it doesn't work too well with this because this is 15 pound amnesia and it's quite stiff but when you do it with a fluorocarbon it actually wraps the fluorocarbon around the silicon and pulls it quite tight so you end up with quite a robust sitting um, and you've got that option which are again my favorite i love it of adjusting depth just adjusting the depth you can go shallower on the leader you can go deeper absolutely brilliant I, I love the fact that you can adjust the depth with these ones because the fish as i said earlier do not sit in one place they will move around and you can, you can kind of find them on the depth and if you decide that you've had enough using the indicator or it's not effective on the day the method's no good you just pull the silicon out take it off and you don't even have to remove the flies that you've tied on the end nothing more than just taking the bung off uh, and fishing a long line of buzzers or whatever absolutely excellent on the day as for depths starting depths if you if you going out and you purposely um, want to try the bung or it's just the conditions suit the bung if it's flat calm or if there's no fish moving and you want to find the depth the bung is e excellent for that um, start off I normally start off with something like a four foot drop um, good way of measuring it is to set your your bung up as I shown you earlier with your fly uh, put the bung in the center of your chest pull the fly out to there that should give you around about three to four foot and that's a good starting point if you need to increase the depth go up in foot increasements so basically hold it like this again get the bung and pull it till your arms sort of on a right angle there that's an extra foot so that gives you another foot's depth foot depth sorry and then open your arms out wide and you're looking at five to six foot drop or simply you can just judge it just hold the line hold the bung in your hand pull the line out the foot and that's it same if you want to decrease it just pull it back about a foot really really good really good this technique is excellent for beginners as well because the casting that's needed is very there is a different way to cast a bung you don't cast tight loops when you're fishing the bung you cast quite a large arc of loop which gives the the bung and the fly which is normally quite heavy time to come over the top it, it just keeps everything nice and tight if you try to, to cast a tight loop you're going to get loads of slack line it's pointless but um for beginners excellent excellent way of introducing somebody to trout fishing some people think it's float fishing personally i i'm indifferent i don't really care there's a style called new zealand fishing which has been around for ages where basically you have um, a fly pattern you have a fly pattern like this and tied to the bend of the hook you have a nymph this pattern's normally um, CDC or something buoyant and you've got the nymph at the bottom on a short say a one foot six inch snood and they basically used to drift it down the river to stop the the tungsten or the gold bead nymph catching on the bottom and that's basically New Zealand fish style fishing and that's where it came from so love it or hate it uh, bung fishing's here to stay people are going to use it on some days it will outfish every other technique promise you every other technique uh, some days it, it won't do very well but that's fishing you need to find out what the fish want and how they want it presented so i hope it's been helpful i know it's quite a quick video um i will try and do some i've had a request for some videos um showing knots i just need to get to grips with um having the camera quite close so you can actually see what's going on but i will do that i promise but thank you very much for watching um i hope you found it helpful and um if you haven't already please like and subscribe the channel so i can grow it a little bit but thank you very much bye for now